Hi guys. Um, so this is to walk you guys through your first essay assignment. Um, and so far in the unit, you guys have read a lot of different accounts of different early settlers' experiences. Um, so the prompt is pretty simple for this one. You're going to choose one of the authors that you read in the unit, and you're going to develop an analysis around that work that you read from that author in this in this unit. You can choose more than one work if you like. If it's um, say you know, a short poem or something like that, you could choose two, but I would suggest keeping it narrow, keeping it focused to really one work um, to kind of allow you to really expand on that with your analysis. Um, you're also going to incorporate the contextual elements related to their life. So you're going to look at like the cultural, historical, or or other type of impact that, that influenced that work. So the most important thing is that you're analyzing this as a piece of literature um, so I don't want this to become a history essay. I don't want it to become a biography. You need to analyze the, the literature as a piece of literature. So thinking about things like characterization, plot, symbolism, metaphors, um, similes, other literary devices. Um, that's the most important thing. But secondarily, you do want to think about the, the impact around the work. Um, so... In that sense, you want to think about the political, social, or economic changes that were happening um, <clears throat> during this kind of early American identity that was being formed by these early settlers. So, <clears throat> forgive me, <clears throat> sorry. For example, um, with Christopher Columbus, you would look at his letter primarily as a piece of literature. So I'd want you to analyze something like the tone, the, the narrator, the POV, um, you know, looking at the syntax, the use of the word I repeatedly, that kind of thing, the imagery that he uses, the, the characterization of the native people. Um, but secondarily, I want you to think about the, the discussions that are happening around, around this time. So what's the economic situation? Why is it that Columbus is promoting his own success so heavily um, through the syntax? You know, why is it that he is... Um, how, how is it important that he portrays Native people as somehow less than human? How, why does that matter in terms of our larger um, grain of history in the way that we have positioned, you know, Native peoples um, and, and what's to come later as an American, quote unquote, American identity? How is that formed here? Um, for example, the same thing you could look at someone like, Bradstreet. You could look at how she talks. You could analyze her poem, of course, primarily as a, as a poetry. So you'd want to think about rhyme scheme or, um, you know, structure or symbolism or anything like that first, primarily. But secondarily, you could think about what she's saying about um, Puritan relationships, about the role of women in society, about, um, you know, the, the dynamics between the genders at this time, the role of religion at this time. There's a lot that you could talk about. So what I want you to do is try and keep your argument pretty narrow and focused. It's not a long essay, um, but think about why that text matters. Why does it matter that we read Columbus's letters based on the perception that we have of him in, in the larger historical context? Why does it matter that we understand John Winthrop's um, perspective of revivalism? How, why does it matter that we read trickster tales? Um, things like that. So some questions you can consider. Um, you think about, and these are not, you don't need to consider all of these as just ideas. Think about the author and work and how they influence or impact the social, political, or economic changes happening. So Columbus doesn't just reflect what's happening. He also shapes our understanding of early American identities, right? Or early identities in America. Um, why does it matter that we read the first female transatlantic poet? Why does it matter that we read her perspective? Um, how does that author and work fit or not fit with that new, um, quote unquote, new American identity? So how does a trickster tale fit or not fit with what we perceive as this early identity? Um, how does the author or work help shape the new American ideals? And how do they approach a certain subject matter? So for example, De Vaca and Columbus have very different ways that they approach talking about native people. Um, 
John Winthrop and Anne Bradstreet have very different ways that they talk about religion. So think about how they approach a certain idea. And then what's the goal? What are they trying to say? What are they trying to make happen? So Devaka and Columbus have very clear goals with who they're writing to. And that's why they describe things the way that they do, the land, the people, their own accomplishments. Um, what is John Winthrop's goal? What is he trying to make happen with religion in this respect? Why does he use the language that he does to try and make that goal happen? Um, and then if you just think about the historical situation. So, for example, Columbus and De Vaca as explorers, um, how does their identity, their, their personal biography help shape that meaning? How does Bradstreet's identity as a female author a uh, transatlantic poet, how does that historically situate her as an author? So again, just ideas you can think about, marinate over them, don't, don't need to take all of them into consideration or write about all of them, but just some things to think about. Um, but I'm going to reiterate, the most important thing is that you keep the focus on the text, analyzing it as a piece of literature. So you need to have one research source in your work. You can pull from anything on the internet that is a credible source. So things like history.com, biography.com, pbs, anything.edu um, is fine. Of course, Wikipedia is, a, is a not acceptable because it, it can be edited by anyone. Um, but make sure you cite it correctly and include it in your bibliography. Don't use something like 123helpme.com or gradesaver.com. These are not credible sources. Um, you do need to have a clear thesis and main ideas. So in your introduction, I should see a good thesis argument. Um, so for example, that could be something like Anne Bradstreet uses um, the, Anne Bradstreet's poetry portrays, uh, you know, the early, uh, whatever you could say, the early rights of women in uh, Puritanism. Something like that would be a clear thesis claim. And the main ideas as well. Expand on those ideas with evidence from the text. So this means pulling in solid quotes from the text that show your audience what you're talking about. So, for example, if you're going to tell me that, um, say, De Vaca uses certain symbolism to describe the land, you need to pull in a quote that shows me what that is. Um, if you're going to use, the, say, that John Winthrop uses metaphors to describe the power of God over man, you need to pull in a quote, say, for example, the spider over the fire, um, that shows that exact what you're talking about. So this is really important. You always want to have good evidence from your text to show what you're talking about. Um, use specific words, phrases, or passages to support your claim as evidence. And then expand on that in your own words around the, the quote. Um, the quotes should also come from your research source. So um, if you pull, say, from pbs.com and you want to talk about something about Bradstreet's biography and you pull in a quote from, from pbs.com, make sure you cite it in text and on the bibliography as well. So your essay needs to be two to three pages in length and is due on Sunday, September 20th at 11.59 p.m. So this means minimum page length. That means bottom of the second page at minimum. If you write less than that, you do lose points. And proper MLA is required. So that means the heading in the top left corner, name, date, uh, instructor's name, and uh, course and section number. Have a title. Have page numbers in the top right corner. One inch margins all around, Times New Roman Cambria Arial font, 12 point double spaced. Um, remember that all essays will be checked for plagiarism. Um, you have access to those reports as well, so you can see it. And then you guys are going to be assessed on making sure you have good, close analysis of the literary work as a piece of literature. Um, make sure that you secondarily bring in the historical context, whether that's looking at the author's identity or the larger historical situation. Um, you do want to contextualize the work. Um, good, solid evidence to support your claims from your primary and your secondary source. Um, proper number of sources, so in this case one. Proper page length, MLA, formatting, citations. Um, again, you do need to cite in text and you need to cite on a bibliography. A fully developed essay structure including an intro, clear main ideas and a conclusion, and good clear organization of all your ideas.
So some things you can think about, um, and again, this is just suggestions. You do not need to cover all of this. This is just ideas. Characterization. So if you're looking at the piece of literature, you can think about the characterization. Think about the archetypes. Who's the protagonist? Who's the antagonist? Are they developed? Are they flat? Are they round? Um, look about literary devices like similes, metaphors, foreshadowing, flashbacks, irony. Look at the structure. So the dramatic arc the uh, exposition, the rising action, the climax, the falling action, the resolution. Um, you could look at the point of view or the narrator. You could look at things like themes, symbols, motifs, allusions. And then secondarily, like I said, look at the historical context. So in this sense, you could look at the author's bio. You could look at the work itself, the history of the work. Um, you could look at the events surrounding the writing of the work. You could look at the ethical, moral, or social issues happening at the time, um, so on and so forth. So if you, if you guys have questions about this, let me know. But the prompt is purposely broad because I want you guys to talk about what is interesting to you and what you found to be valuable in the text that you read. So again, you'll choose one author and one text that we read in the course from that author and write a close literary analysis of that work. So again, let me know if you have any questions. Um, you're more than welcome to, to email me with any questions you may have, but choose what was interesting to you, choose what matters.